Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back once again to TransWest Truck Trailer RV. My name's Mark Love, and I'm really excited about today's video. I've got a brand new coach for you. It's a 2024 Mountain Air, and it's a brand new floor plan. Uh, Newmar did a great job with this new concept. What we have here is a 38-foot Mountain Air with a 525 Cummins and the tag axle. So uh, as we walk around, I'll point out, you know, some of the things that they do on all Mountaineers, some of the things that make this so unique. Uh, let's start back here, in fact, and do a little bit on the outside. As you can see, we've got the dual uh, roof mount uh, Gerard awnings, or the Nova awnings, excuse me. And we also have the window awning package here. But while we're back here, I, I just wanted to zoom in on our rear axles a little bit. Of course, when you see this kind of hub, that tells you it's a steerable tag axle. This is your drive axle and it's fixed. But the thing I wanna make a point about is 38 feet with a tag axle is unheard of in the RV business. Most companies put their tag axles on at about 42 or 43 feet. Numar adds a tag axle to their 40 footers. It makes it a more stable driving platform. You can uh, put the tile all the way back in the bathroom. It's a stronger uh, uh, chassis. But on a 38 footer with two rear axles, this is the most stable driving diesel pusher that's out there. And not only that, because it's three to 4,000 pounds lighter, than what your typical Mountaineer is. Mountaineer is on a 54,000 pound chassis. This is also a 54,000 pound chassis, but being so much lighter, it is the fastest accelerating diesel motorhome that Newmar makes. And that includes your uh, 600 horse Essex, King Air and London Air. This one would beat them all if you take them down to the track and uh, race them. So uh, let's go ahead and, and do our normal exterior walk around. Some of the things I always like to point out, of course, this has your, your uh, three-way camera system. You've got cameras on the back. There's actually four cameras. Uh, the rear view monitor, camera on the other blinker. You do have the 360 all the way around. Uh, heavy duty grab handle with a keyless entry and a doorbell. That's always a nice feature. As you can see, I've dumped the airbags down here. This coach also has air leveling that I'll talk about a little bit when we get inside. Of course, I always like to point out, this is your fuel fill. And one thing Numar does, they put a steel plate to protect that fuel line. You can imagine what would happen if you were to have a blowout or shred this front tire. You would tear up that fuel line pretty good if it's not protected. So if you are looking at other uh, units, check that out. See if they protect their, uh, their fuel line. Okay, let's move down the, the passenger side. In this first compartment, like a lot of Numars, they put this uh, outside refrigerator freezer in, and this is a standard option now. You get this automatically. And you see you've got two zones there. You could have, you know, one set up for drinks or maybe you want to put your frozen meats in there while you're traveling. It's about a uh, three point uh, something, 3.2, 3.6 cubic foot. So it gives you some nice extra room. And then a couple years ago, they added this shelf up on top, which is a great idea because it gives you extra storage. Let's move down. Uh, I'm looking for a place to point out the Star Foundation, and being a 38-footer, it, it's a little bit more crowded in here, but here's another difference. They made the center compartment kind of the barn door style, and these both have an electric slide-out tray underneath. And uh, as you can see, we've got some extra floor tiles here. We have our vacuum hoses and components. We have our emergency rod if you need to uh, crank the slides in and so forth. And uh, like I say, they, they're both electric. And I like the fact that they put the button right here on the door. Makes it easy to get in and out of. Another thing you can see in this compartment is your vacuum right here. So you've got connections inside, but the nice thing about this is you can take those hoses and clean out these uh, 
these storage bins or these slide trays right outside. So it makes it easy to, to help keep things clean. Also, if you notice, most of your compartments have a 110 outlet in here. When you open any door, you get your LED side lights over here that come on. So just makes it really easy when you're traveling to, to get your gear in and out of the middle and not have to struggle around with it too much. Another thing they did, this has kind of been ongoing, is they changed their bulb seal here so the doors seal better. You used to have to maybe slam them a little bit to get them closed. Now they, they shut nice and easy. Okay, because of this particular floor plan inside, they couldn't put the TV in the sidewall, so they put it down here, and this one does pull out. And uh, we've got a, this is a 42 inch, I believe, on your outside. Get a 50 inch for your main TV inside. You notice you do have a couple more 110 outlets. All of them have uh, USB ports also with them. One of our marker lights, or our, uh, uh, when you're hooking up, these are nice to, to illuminate that side of the coach. And then you do have six marker lights all the way around. Okay, one other thing that always nice to point out, look at your slide right here. Look how it tucks inside the sidewall. These are true flush slides. Most companies have a fascia that goes over the wall. So you have a little bit of a, an edge here where wind, rain, you know, they can drive the water in. Plus, you hear the noise more when you're going down the road. So these, when they come in, there's an auto locking mechanism. They're sealed tight. You don't get the wind noise, which can be louder than the engine noise, actually, in a diesel pusher. So it just makes for a quieter, uh, nicer ride when you're in one of these new Mars. Okay, we've got our deaf compartment right here. And the other thing I like to point out, this is a Spartan K3 chassis, and you can manually fill your airbags right here. It doesn't happen often, but occasionally you have a problem, you wanna get some air in there, you've got a compressor on board, you can actually fill those airbags right here if they're not filling up on their own. And then back in this compartment, we've got our chassis batteries, the big D-sized batteries with your master uh, shutoffs here, but you also have your water separator, your fuel filter, everything is easy to access right here. That's one of the things I like about the Spartan chassis, it's, it's very user friendly. Okay, let's move to the back, and again, they didn't change the caps or do a facelift on the, on the Mountaineer this year. But these are two brand new uh, floor plans, the 3823 and the 3825. But the Cummins now, this is your 11.9 uh, uh, liter engine. It's a 525 horse, it used to be 500. Still has 1,695 foot pounds of torque. And it's a side radiator. And you can see how easy it is to get in here, check your oil, uh, you know, add oil. You got your transmission over here air filter right here, uh, your coolant, you can see the level right here, uh, Oasis fluid. Everything is just wide open and easy to access. One of the benefits of getting a higher end coach with a side radiator as opposed to a rear radiator. And then you've got you know some diagnostics here. This by the way is for your air filter. Tells you when uh, it's getting dirty. As this yellow stopper gets up into the red, you wanna change that air filter. And that's about every two years you need to do that. Also with the K3 Spartan chassis, there's an option for your Kurt Spectrum uh, brake control system. So basically, if you're towing with an Air Force One, you're all set to go right here. There's your air plug, there's your electrical. You do have a standard seven way, two inch receiver. This is rated to pull 15,000 pounds. So what you have is a 54,000 pound chassis and then 69,000 is your gross uh, vehicle weight or gross uh, tow rate. So basically it leaves 15,000 pounds for towing 
And by the way, the, the cargo carrying capacity on this one is about 12,800 pounds. On a 45 foot mountain air, that's about 9,000 pounds. So that's nearly 4,000 pounds, almost two tons different. So it's not surprising that this is a faster accelerating coach. It's quite a bit lighter. Okay, over here we've got our side radiator. You always get better cooling when they're uh, on the side as opposed to the rear. We've got our def fill on this side also, so you can fill def and fuel from either side. Got just a little storage compartment here. Gloves, uh, tools, whatever you want to put in there. Some people put their, uh, uh, their sewer hose in here. But this unit also has a macerator, so you might not even carry a sewer hose. That's what this is right here. The beauty of a macerator is you can pump your solid waste uphill if you need to. You might not have a, a dump station right there below you, so if you have to pump it uphill, you can. And uh, here we've got our winterization bypass kit. I love their water compartment, the, the stainless steel look, how they've got everything labeled, and it's really easy to access. This is your water filter right here. That does come with a wrench to take it off. You have black and gray uh, tank rinses um, and of course you've got to open and close your valve depending on whether you're rinsing the tank or or using it normally turn your SantaCon system on right here you can monitor your tanks right here you can also uh, from this you can turn on your generator right here if you need to do that here is our uh, main drain if you are going to use a standard hose then we do have a power uh, hose reel here and uh, let me see where do they put that button there we are and then also we have our outside shower and this is pretty much like a hot and cold kitchen sprayer but you know if you need to hose off a dirty dog or dirty kids or something or you've been out on a mountain bike ride and want to wash off your your bike you got that right here. And then these are our hot and uh, cold water low point drains. Everything easy to access, uh, well labeled. They even give you a place for your paper towels. You can get a look right here at those LED lights. Like I say, when I open up in a compartment, those are going to come on and illuminate the whole underneath area. Another thing I like to point out, check out this hinge and this door. As I push it in, it raises up. And the reason they do that, there's only a small section that's under this main slide out. When this comes out, the HWH slides drop. If you had to make this without that hinge, the door would have to be a little bit shorter to accommodate the clearance on this slide out. It's not so important on your water compartment, but where you've got storage compartments, it's nice because it gives you a taller door to get your cargo in there. Okay, here's our 50 amp uh, power rewind cord. It's manual out and rewind or power in. That's nice in the winter when those are frozen and hard to struggle with. You also get an input here. Maybe you're using a, a portable uh, satellite system or park cable if you're someplace that has that. And then you also have your surge protector and your uh, crossover switch right there. This compartment is our Oasis Chinook Hydronic Heating System. Uh, it's a dual loop system and one of the beauties of the Oasis is they have two electric elements and one diesel element so it makes it a little bit easier to, to heat up the coach uh, faster if you're in you know say 50 degree weather and you don't want to turn on your diesel burner you can heat it electrically with those two elements and it's a cleaner burning quieter system than some of the other hydronic heaters and you do have some access to storage or can pass things through here on the side if you'd like all right here is a big option for this year these are our lithium ion they are 320 amp hour batteries each. So with the lithium package, you get two 
so 640 amp hours and it also gives you a second 3000 watt inverter so you have dual inverters 6000 watts total and you also have a spot you could add a third battery giving you a total of 960 amp hours if you like okay and then over here again we have our fuel fuel on the driver's side this compartment is a lot of your chassis circuit so if maybe your seat's not working or a blinker or something you can come out here and check it out uh, they do give you spare fuses and also this one has a, a uh, electric slide tray for your generator I'm gonna put that out right now now standard on your 45 foot Mountaineers is a 12,500 uh, diesel generator. This is a 10,000 watt diesel generator. The reason they can do that is because this only has two air conditioners instead of three. So you don't need that 12.5. But while we're here, let's get a look at what we've got right in here. And it's easy for me to step inside. I've got a water outlet here. And this is great when you want to hose the bugs off the front of your coach and your window. Uh, windshield wiper here, oil filter, everything is easy to access. You can uh, get in and start and stop your generator right here. Uh, and the fact that it's on a, a nice uh, electric slide tray makes it easy to access and to put it away when you're done. There we go. Okay, up front here, one of the things I'll point out, look at the size of this windshield. And when you're sitting there uh, in the driver's seat with the slope of the dash, you can see right down in front of you really well. This gives you a great panoramic view. Uh, this is part of our uh, collision avoidance system that's with this coach. You have the, the blind spot monitoring, the lane assist, uh, active uh, cruise control. All your safety enhancements come with this coach. You can see up on top there's a, an extra camera there. That's part of our bird's eye view that I'll show you here in a little bit. Okay, well let's go ahead and, and step inside. Now I wanted to leave the slides closed so you can see what it's like when you travel. Oh, while you're here, stop one second and let me point out, you have two storage compartments right here. So for shoes or gloves or muddy clothes or dog food and leashes, it's just convenient to have those compartments right there. So this is what it looks like when you're traveling. And as you can see, uh, although it's a little tight, it's easy to get through there. If you have, you know, golden retrievers or labs or larger dogs, they can walk through here without any problem. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these opened up. And on this model, I can actually open both these slides at the same time. Let that drop all the way down. These up front are your uh, HWH slide mechanisms. They are hydraulic, very heavy duty slide mechanisms. And it's because you've got tile in that slide out as opposed to the carpet. There we go. All right, great looking coach here. Uh, let's start with the dash. Talk about a few things we've got up here. Uh, so, first of all, you've got a little pedal here to tilt your steering wheel, but you've also got a couple of knobs here. And what this first one does, it's your pedals right there. So, uh, if you're, you know, not as tall as some people like myself, I can run these pedals all the way out, make it, make it very easy uh, to be comfortable. And then they also moved. A, uh, a dial up here for your comfort drive, as you can see. And uh, 
you know, you used to have to scroll through to get to that. I don't know. Let me go ahead and get this started. It's given us a warning that there's low air pressure, and that's because I actually dumped the air on this coach. To bring it down makes it a little easier to get into, but I wanted to demonstrate some of the things here. So we're airing up right now, and uh, let's get into our home screen. And you can see, I can scroll up here and get to my air leveling. And if I hit OK, I can hit the travel mode, or I can actually hit auto level, which I'm going to do right now. And instead of using uh, my hydraulic uh, four corner jacks, I'm going to level this with my airbags right now. So this will take a few minutes. And when we get out, when we're done, you'll notice the step's going to be quite a bit higher because we're on a slope here. And I can even feel it adjusting right now. But you, you do have two leveling systems. So if you pull over at a you know, someplace just to sleep for a few hours or uh, pull into a Walmart to spend the night, you can level it with your airbags. You don't have to worry about running the jacks down. Very nice feature. Also, as we scroll through here, uh, let's see. We do have our TPMS. These are now standard. And uh, looks like we've got one maybe that's not registering. We'll get that checked out. If you wanna go into your trip settings, tells you the fuel used, your average speed, your average fuel economy. Everything is right here at your fingertip. You can even, of course, adjust the brightness of your dash. But the... Uh, the dash on this Spartan, it's really easy to read. And the fact that I don't have to scroll through now when I want to adjust my, my comfort drive. And that's right here. So I'll just talk briefly about this comfort drive. It's a computer assisted steering uh, assist system that is sensing the torque on the tires on the, uh, maybe you've got a strong crosswind pushing you and you have to be fighting it to keep it in your lane or uh, you know, the road's got a real crown to it. I can set this way down on a level where I can turn this with one finger. And as soon as I let go, Watch how that wheel comes back to the center position on its own. And keep in mind, we've got all the weight on the wheels right now, and we don't have our jacks down. So the fact that it can bring this right back to the center position on its own, it's kind of impressive. What that's going to do on a long trip, it's going to save the stress on your shoulders and upper arms. You're really only turning it in one direction, and then when you come out of that turn, you let it come back on its own. You usually have to slow it down because it wants to to come back to the center position too fast. But uh, Comfort Drive, there's only a couple of companies that use it. Uh, and you can get that both on the Spartan and the Freightliner chassis. Numar was the first company to uh, start putting it on their diesel coaches. And now on all of their diesels, you get that as a standard feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off now. And there's how I get my seat out of there. Uh, while we're here, we do have the other standard uh, features. Of course, your levelers are right over here. These are your hydraulic uh, leveling jacks. Uh, 3000 Allison uh, six-speed transmission. We do have a three-speed engine brake. Once I turn it on, I've got a high, medium, low. Uh, that's actually a transmission retarder, putting torque on the drive shaft to slow you down. And then here we can manually uh, dump our, our uh, tag axle. The reason you might want to do that is when you're backing up, if you dump the air off that tag axle, you're not scrubbing the tires as much. It makes it easier. Even though they are steerable tags, uh, sometimes you do want to get that air pressure off that back axle. You do that all right here. They've got a nice uh, phone charging mat. And in this particular floor plan, uh, we've got the nice, comfortable driver's seat with a footrest and heated. But on our passenger seat here, we've got the extra ride. I used to call these the grandmother seat because you could sit here with, you know, grandmother and her, her grandchild in one seat. But uh, you've got an extra wide seat here. It does have a recliner. And then if you look right here, we also have a monitor for the... Uh, 
you know, for the passenger. Well, that's probably not going to key up without my ignition on. Uh, but they've got their own monitor. They can change the radio. They can navigate for you, check the cameras and so forth. Oh, there's your cameras. Um, you also have a phone charger over here. Uh, that's one thing that while I'm here, I'm going to kind of backtrack and point out about the camera system here. This is your uh, bird's eye view. So I go into my menu. Let's see. Go into my camera control. And if I want the bird's eye view, right here it is. It's like, you know, we've got a drone flying over us. So you can see what's all the way around you. But, you know, you can set these up anyway. Now, we're seeing the sides of our slide outs there. This is a particular view that I like. When I'm going down the road, uh, well, let's start with this one. As I'm traveling down the road and want to see the traffic behind me, I'm going to have it on the wide view. This one, kind of a medium view. You can still see what's behind you. Maybe you're pulling a trailer and you want to keep an eye on it. But let's say you're hooking a trailer up. I can look straight down. So if I had my receiver hitch in that insert, I would see the ball, and it makes it easy to line that up with the tongue of the trailer. And that's all done right here with your 360-degree uh, camera. A lot of people like this at night because if you hear noise or somebody's messing around outside, you can kind of see if they're near your coach. But another great feature that is standard on your Mountaineer now, that's not an option. Okay, let's take a look at the floor plan. Now, this is the 3823. It's somewhat reminiscent of, uh, of one of the new air floor plans. And there's actually a 3717 Ventana similar where your sink is fixed and your slide telescopes over it. So the big slide in this floor plan is your kitchen slide right here. And by the way, this actually has four uh, slide outs instead of three on this one. Does come with a couple of foot rests and uh, these are kind of nice. You can flip it over. If you want a hard surface there, use as a coffee table. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you know, you've got another footrest over here. And with these two couches, they do both make into sleepers. Now, this one is, is a what we call a jackknife. First of all, I'll show you, you do have a little storage area there. So maybe keeping your blankets or extra pillows or something like that. And then the jackknives, of course, uh, they just kind of pull up and lay down. But you can actually open them both up. You have a height of bed over here. And you can see back there, you do have a, a couple of seat belts. You might not be able to see them under that drawer. But you've got a couple of seat belts on each side. Then across from, uh, you know, your jackknife couch, first of all, you do have your televator. Let me go ahead and put that up. This is our 50 inch TV. Uh, and I'm not, systems, there we go, and TV lift, lift up. So while that's going up, I'm going to go ahead and convert this into a sleeper for you. Now, another beauty of having a short 38-foot mountain air, number one, the better towing, the faster acceleration, the more stable ride. But if you get too short, you don't have room for a lot of people, which you don't always want. There's a saying in the RV business with a diesel pusher, it's cocktails for six, dinner for four, sleeping for two. But on those occasions where you have kids or grandkids with you and you need to uh, have some extra sleeping, there's a little latch there you gotta pull. And then this comes out very easy. And this is a memory foam mattress. So it's actually quite comfortable and it'll fluff up a little bit once you, uh, you know, once you open it up. But this bed can also come down. So they would touch, but you could potentially sleep, you know, somebody here and you know, two small people or a couple of kids here, uh, you know, if you're much over six foot, this probably becomes a single bed at that point. But very fast and easy to, to set it up and put it away. And then uh, uh, while you're here, I don't know if you can see, there we go. 
You can see you do have seat belts under here. So even though we don't have them pulled out, you've got two on this side, two on the other side, and then two up front. And then that tucks down nice and easy. And there you go. That's all there is to making that extra sleeper. So you have a couple of footstools here. And myself, I probably would have them on this side while I'm watching the TV, but that's up to you. This is our dinette booth, and uh, it does pull out quite a ways, and you've actually got two leafs there underneath the, uh, the mattress in the bedroom. And you do get some storage here too, but it's not a lot. This is not the credenza desk. You've got a couple of shelves, one on each side. The one's in the middle, a little bit bigger because it's slightly deeper, but uh, you know, you'll find something to put there, I'm sure. Then you have two folding chairs that match this fabric also under the bed. And by the way, this is the, uh, the Haven decor with the sable maple hardwood uh, cabinets. Now, I've heard some people say they don't like the dark cabinets or the dark look, but I find when they pair it with the light tile and the lighter uh, cabinets, it doesn't make it look so small. I really actually kind of like this look. This is the matte finish, not the high gloss. While we're right here, we might as well look at what we've got for storage. Oops. We've got three compartments here, and they are all opened. So if you have longer items, you can get them in there. And then you do have your uh, plugs there for your video components. There is a Bose 900 soundbar right there. Another uh, little cubby over here. And that does go back behind your, uh, your soundbar area. On this side, we've got three more compartments. And again, everything is open, so you've got a lot of room here. And if they're longer items and won't fit in one, you can figure out a way to get them in here. Okay, let's move over to the kitchen. Now, this is our dual undermount stainless steel sink, and it's a very deep sink. You do have residential style sprayer faucet there. Up above, you get a nice pull out here. Another one over here. And that does have a little catch. Those are soft clothes, but it, you know, you gotta give it a tug to get it out. They don't just fall out on their own. Underneath here, We've got another area with a place for our trash can. As you can see, we've got our uh, sink covers right here. There's another one down there. And then we get another pull-out tray. Little place for scrubbies or dish soap or whatever you want right there. A nice skinny one maybe for your knives or, you know, spices, whatever you want to put in there. And then we have three full pull-out drawers here. And again, these are all soft clothes. Uh, you've got your dishwasher. I don't have 110 power on right now, so this won't open up. You need either your inverter on or your generator running. Another very deep silverware drawer here and here's all your remotes uh, typically you get some touch-up paint right there it is the wrench for your water filter outside and so forth uh, and then you do have the remote for your air mattress bed and your mcd uh, shades these are electric shades i left the day shades down you can either raise and lower them with one of your uh, panels on the wall or there's a remote control for it. You do get a nice convection microwave. And 
And then next to that, we have our 19.7 cubic feet residential refrigerator. And again, with those two lithium ion batteries and two 3000 watt inverters, you can stay out a long time without having to worry about running out of power. Okay, I did mention that uh, this is a four slide coach. I'm gonna go ahead and run my bedroom slide out right now. Oh. It is a king bed, and you know, at 38 feet, uh, I really wouldn't want a bath and a half set up. You can get one with a full wall slide and a bath and a half, but I don't mind having the separation between the bedroom and the living area. This is what I kind of consider an old school floor plan where you have a center bathroom, and this particular one, the bathroom is all one unit. So your toilet, your sink, your shower, and look at that shower, it's beautiful tile work in there. If you're 6'4", six, 6'5", six, you've got room to stand up in there. I'm just going to open these cabinets and step out of the way so you can see the storage. <laughs> 